Senator Shelley Moore Capito, one of the key authors of the bipartisan infrastructure bill, see what she thinks about all these pages and all the information. Uh, first of all, Senator Capito, it's good to see you, ma'am. I've not seen you Thank in you. a while. We appreciate your coming on. Let me uh, go to work first on the stuff coming from John Kennedy and John Barrasso and Marsha Blackburn. No China benefit, benefiting um, amendments, I guess you would call them. What do you think about this? Well, I'm absolutely in agreement with them uh, in terms of advantaging China or even using China. I mean, we've been fighting this, as you know, through the decades, and certainly more recently it's getting even more intense. There is a lot, there are provisions in this bill for Made in America and uh, Made in America provisions. And, and so I think that, you know, hopefully we've looked as a whole at the supply chain issue, both from pharmaceuticals to batteries and other things, um, to, uh, you know, uh, chips for um, cars and such. To try to get that manufacturing back into this country, I think that's extremely important. And I, I think that a broad infrastructure package does have our Made in America provisions in there that will help encourage that. You know, Senator, it goes to me, it's, it's, it brings up some really important issues, not only infrastructure issues, but really national security issues. So we are pushing, I'm using the collective we, that may be unfair. And, and by the way, I have said your bill of the bipartisan bill has more good than bad, although I'm somewhat critical of a lot of the green stuff in the bill, but let's not go there for today. I just want to get your take. We're pushing for electricity and batteries and electric cars and charging stations and electric grid. And we're pushing away from the traditional fossil fuels of which West Virginia is a key producer. Right. But doesn't this play into China's hands, at least for the next, you know, 10 or 12 or 15 years until we can get mines going again, but the environmentalists don't like the mines and we've been shutting them instead? I mean, aren't we playing into China on this? Uh, well, actually, no. I think that by having a vibrant infrastructure uh, package that uh, modernizes America and our transportation, I think... It really strengthens our country in a lot of different ways. But let's talk about the, the electric vehicle uh, aspects of this. Uh, we see the major car manufacturers are moving towards uh, EVs. We see trucks moving in that direction, not exclusively, but certainly into the future. Well, I can accept that we need an infrastructure to be able to, you know, um, uh, uh, amp up your car. I get that. But at the same time, that electricity has to come from somewhere, Larry. And this is where I think the big uh, disconnect is. That electricity in this country is still going to be coming from natural gas, from coal, from nuclear, because they hold the baseload fuels uh, for our electric grid. So it'll be very important if we're going to go more electric that we generate more power and all sources, I think, will be the beneficiary of that until they get battery technology that can store the solar and wind. And we don't see that in the near future. Yeah, so I, you, I don't think they like that type of argument, but that right. is the reality. No, I, I, see, you and I totally agree on that. Not, not surprisingly, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. I agree, but I don't think our friends on the left agree. And the thrust of this bill, and really the thrust of, I think, what's coming in reconciliation, is what I will loosely call the Green New Deal, which will put strict limits on carbon emissions and the use of fossil fuels, if not eliminating them altogether in something like 10 years or 12 years, I don't know. And I just don't think, you know, number one, I think it does uh, help China, not us. We're just not equipped for that. I don't think they're being serious about that. Batteries well, I, are not going to come out of the sky. You know, we have to get lithium and all these uh, strategic metals. We don't have them. And China does. No, and we do have some some parts of this bill that does encourage more critical uh, mineral uh, discoveries here and 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 um, mining for those materials here in this country. I would tell you that you can go to coal piles and uh, clean them up at the same time and extract critical minerals. So we're working on that technology in West Virginia uh, that will actually be a double benefit to us. Uh, I I think that where you're where we have a bit of a disconnect is this 3.5 trillion dollar reckless bill that's coming right after the physical infrastructure bill absolutely is a straight up Green New Deal, mm -hmm. along with uh, re-social engineering our entire country. And that is a, a very worrisome, and I think we're going to fight that one tooth and nail. But we do believe, and I believe anyway, that physical infrastructure, core infrastructure, airports, rail, broadband, all of these things, uh, to, to give a big boost to that 
would benefit everybody. And I think we would have um, the resulting economic growth. And you would know more about the statistics on that maybe than I might. But I think the, uh, it's backed up in looking at what, what the impacts of big investments have had in the, in the past. Well, I don't think it'll generate the dynamic scoring boost that my friend Mark Warner thinks. He's been on the show. We had a couple laughs about that. But I just want to tell you how much. Look, uh, I agree with you, and I love your point about coal. We can find these strategic minerals in coal if we do right. it right. And right. coal, you know, coal is anathema to the Green New Dealers, but coal is actually in great demand now around the world, for better or worse. Right. And Prices are going up. People tell me clean coal is something that is being developed. Is that fair? Well Yes, it is. And that's why I think the investment in clean coal and uh, the 45Q, which is a tax advantage that uh, was created uh, by me and several others several years ago to incent clean coal to be able to take a tax credit if you use it for an enhanced oil recovery or if you sequester it. This is the type of thing we need to be investing in, in in the future. If you look at who's the greatest emitter of carbon, it's the transportation sector itself. It's no longer the power sector. Mm. And so I think you have to take this in consideration as, as we move towards electric vehicles, which I'm not opposing and, and, and could be, you know, and have supported you still have to get the electricity somewhere, and that seems right. to always be the disconnect. Right. Absolutely right. Um, one last uh, quick one. Sure. Um, national mileage uh, projects, fees, um, uh, I don't know what they are. What's, is that in here? Is that going to happen? Well, what that is is a study on uh, if we were to switch our uh, how we fund the highway trust fund as opposed to a gas tax, if we were to actually look at vehicle miles traveled so that the heavier users of the roads would really bear more of the burden. For some reason, the White House really rejected any kind of user fees. So if you're, if you're driving an electric vehicle, you're not paying anything into the gas tax, so you're not paying for the use of the roads. Uh, for, for the life of me, I don't understand that. But... I will say that if we, there have been some experiments across the country to look at this vehicle miles travel concept mm. to help fill that hole in the trust fund, and that's what you're talking about, the national mile. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, some of my conservative friends don't agree, but I actually think it's quite sensible. I just think of it as easy pass. And if the electric vehicles, right. if we're all going to drive Teslas or whatever it is we're going to drive, Somebody's got to pay for the highways. You're right. Right. So why not, you know, have a, a user fee? I mean, years ago, Reagan was in favor of user fees. In fact, Reagan regarded the gas tax as a user fee. I don't know what that would do today. But there's nothing wrong with that. If you're going to drive, you've no. got to pay for the highway. Right. And I think most people that do drive are willing to do that. And certainly when you're, tr when you're hauling cargo, it's a heavier weight on the road. It's more destructive. You're going to end up paying more. I mean, that's just the system, I think, really in order to sustain it is the best way that we should go about it but president biden didn't want to put a he said a burden on anybody but people want to pay for their roads they hate potholes they want to have nice safe roads yep. to drive on rural america as much as urban america and they hate income tax increases and all the rest of it capital gains well they better be looking what's coming tax. in the 3.5 trillion dollar package well i'm with you and it's going to be 5 trillion not 3.5 um, so, right. Senator Capito, you read the 2,701 pages, right? You, of all people, read the thing. <laughs> I've read a lot of it, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> there, are two, there are two major portions of that yeah. that were written in my committee. Uh, uh -huh. I'd say at least, a thousand, the, at least the first 1,000 pages. And so I've, I'm very much aware of what's going on. And remember, I started the negotiations with the framework yes. with the president to yes. begin with. Yes. So a lot of this is what I put into the original bills. I figured now, you... have I read every single page? I'm going to be honest with you, probably <laughs> not. Well, I figured you and Portman were the best bets to actually <laughs> read the bloody thing. Anyway, <laughs> so, Senator Shelley Moore uh, Capito of West Virginia, you're terrific to come on the show. Much obliged, ma'am. Thanks ma so much. Hope to see you mm -hmm. soon.